Hi everyone, my name is Laura Gersenbacher and uh, I've been here about 20 years uh, in the College of Engineering. Uh, about 12 of those years I've been director of the technical communication program there and in around I guess year 2012 I became also director of undergraduate program assessment in the College of Engineering. If you aren't familiar with engineering you may not know that we have a fairly rigorous accreditation body and so we go through a system every six years of reaccreditation, and I I came to Canvas in part because I was really interested in more efficient ways of doing outcome assessment. Uh, so so that's where I'm coming from as a teacher of com really communication skills, but also as a, an assessment person, and. Um, I, I decided to try Canvas last fall for the first time because I was teaching a business ethics course for the full-time MBA program with 100 students in it. I typically do a lot of team projects in there. And someone galvanized me in the, in the School of Business, unfortunately galvanized me about a week before classes began. <laughs> Part of my failure story here, I've got warnings. Um, Someone galvanized me by saying, oh, you can grade, you can set up groups in Canvas, you can grade with a rubric in Canvas, you send it out, boom, like magic, everyone in that group gets that feedback right away, and it's just so much easier. And I was really excited about that because the previous year I had spent a lot of time sort of finding all the student names and putting them into an email and sending that out, and it, it was just cumbersome. So. So I thought this was going to be great, and uh, and then and, and I'm sorry to say that I have some failure stories, but you can. What's there's something great that you can get from this talk. First of all, you will feel almost immediately superior because I blew it in a lot of ways. Um, but you'll also learn some things that are just terrible things that you never want to do, and and you'll be just so far ahead of me. I wish somebody had warned me last fall. I still use Canvas, and I'm a big believer in Canvas, but there are challenges. And so there were mistakes that were made. Um, there were lovely people who helped pull me out of the fire, um, but I, I blew it in a lot of ways. And part of it is because, and maybe this is why I'm here too, um, I'm older, and my brain is starting to get this sort of set in, this kind of accretion. And so people can tell me something, and if they spend like a whole hour telling me how to do stuff, I might be sitting there taking notes and going, oh yes, Antonella, that sounds great. But I, I'm i not really good at remembering things, so don't stick anymore. And so there were key things that I didn't sort of put a star next to when she told me that I'm gonna tell you about now. So what were the mistakes? Um, the first thing was that I decided four days before the semester began that this would be a good time to go ahead and roll out a Canvas page. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's ridiculous now, but I, I, some, somehow I just thought, oh yeah, pull out the Moodle page and just you know, import it into Canvas, and, you know, and it was there, and I thought it was going to be cool. Right? I could see all my stuff. It was organized a little bit differently, but, uh, but I was going to roll with it, and I would never advise that you do that um, because there are some tricks to all of this, and especially if you want to grade with rubrics, you need to plan ahead. So I'm telling everybody in my program, including Mike Shapiro, who's in the room, but I'll, although Mike is already using Canvas, right? I'm not. No. Okay. Well, I'm warning everybody in my program. Uh, build this in over the summertime if you can because it takes some time to just sort of become comfortable with the tools. Um, the next thing that I thought, okay, I thought that, that it would be time saved in grading team projects. I thought that that would be worth the headaches. I didn't, I guess I didn't really appreciate that, no, all kinds of new headaches you never even imagined are going to emerge because you're trying to do something new here. So I, I should have known that, but I didn't believe it. Um, then, and this is kind of important. I chose the most <laughs> unforgiving <laughs> class possible to do this in. Now, I, I've taught for a number of years. Like I said, I've been, you know, well, God, I don't even want to think about how long. <coughs> long enough to where I've almost forgotten how long, okay? You never roll something new out with an unforgiving audience. And the full-time MBA students, and I don't know if you are an MBA, but if you are, you may know this, they're very unforgiving people, okay? They come to campus. First of all, they've been out in the real world. They've seen sloppy and unprofessional, and they're quick to judge, okay? They come in and they're paying a lot of money, and they expect, no, 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 you're not experimenting with us. This has got to be top-notch, right? And so 
because I was experimenting, and I don't know why, but I just sort of thought that like so many of my undergraduates, they would kind of go, oh, cool. She's doing some good things in the classroom. She's trying a few new things. It's good to see that she's interested in continuous improvement. Hell no, they weren't interested in that. They wanted me to have my act together, and I didn't. And then it really damaged my credibility in the class, so don't do that. Um, find a class where, I would suggest undergrads who are, who are I think just more forgiving about this kind of thing. Um, but better than that, don't roll it out four days beforehand, and then you're gonna skip all of these problems. I tried to do a whole bunch of things. Um, I was excited. I don't know how else to describe it. It was ridiculous, but when Antonella said, would you like me to set a grade book? Because then they could see their grades all through the semester, and that would be, and I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's such a good teaching thing for them to know where they are, right? So I said, yeah, let's set it up. Well, I didn't realize, uh, I just didn't realize a lot of things about that, that all kinds of things would be, my phone's ringing. Great. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can cut it off. Oh, sorry. I always ask people to cut their own phones off, and then I don't cut my own phone off. It's a lovely ringtone. So, anyway, another bad thing. I didn't intend to show you failure this morning, but anyway. Um, so I did try to do all, uh, all kinds of things at once, and, and I would suggest that you step into this slowly. Uh, and, and, and do the things that you think, okay, you know, I can manage this, I got this, you know, and then add some, some features. But here's the most important one, and probably I should have put this first if I was a good technical communicator, but let me see if I can just emphasize this. Um, I didn't take careful notes about some of the most important features, like unmuting assignments. <coughs> Anybody in here know what I'm talking about yet? Okay. I didn't realize that that was core, all right? So I'm gonna show you a few things. Um, this is the most serious blunder. I had, um, I built a rubric, by the way, okay. So I had the rubric, I'd given it to my students, and then I decided, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and build this rubric into Canvas. There are trips along the way too, because you've got this rubric and you're copying and pasting chunks out of it, right? And, and you paste it in, but then something happens. If, you're, if you don't have your act together, and this, this is right, right? If you don't have your act together, it can order it in a, almost a backwards way. You have to decide, oh, the bottom of the rubric goes in first, and then, I, or, or something like that. I never really figured it out, as you can tell, all right? I finally realized I need to get professional help. You know, on the rubric and other things, right? So, so, um, so building the rubric in its, itself is, is no piece of cake. And then the, one of the new things for me, and I just want you to know, okay, so I'm a, I'm a writing teacher and an ethics teacher, and both of those things are squishy enough that, I, I don't know, I'm not saying they're really squishy, but they're squishy enough that I'm not accustomed to or ever really used to putting a rubric together that has a point system for every key performance indicator in it. Um, the, el the elements, and so this was the first time I was actually kind of forced to use points. And, 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 and let me just tell you that um, pedagogically, I'm, I'm somewhat opposed to points. Here's why. If somebody's a terrible deliverer, they simply cannot deliver, uh, they're, they're using a lot of filler words, they're getting stuck, they're staring at the tiles in the ceiling, um, hours go by and nothing's coming out of their mouth, it doesn't matter what the content is, almost because the, uh, the delivery is so terrible. And so I want that element in the rubric to overtake some of the other things. So anyway, I haven't used points in the past. I was suddenly having to use points in, in Canvas and Moodle because I'm building this rubric in. So for the first time, I'm building in points for an ethics project that they're doing as a team. Can you see how all, this is all sort of coming together for like a perfect storm of problems because uh, first of all, there are lots of MBA students who don't even believe you can teach ethics. They think business ethics is an oxymoron. Uh, they don't think you can really assess it effectively, and they wonder about your system. And if they're in a team, too, and then you're trying to build in all, in all those points, it's, it's a nightmare, okay? So I got all of that going on a team project, and then I'm grading it, okay? The, the rubric is in, Antonella gave me the big, oh yeah, it looks good. I start grading it one night, all right? And I'm just, I'll be honest with you, I was kind of, kind of practicing with this rubric because I'm like, all right, I, I haven't done this before, so okay, this guy, 
I'm going through all the elements and I'm putting in the numbers and the numbers are kind of new to me. I'm typing a lot of comments and I love it because you can type comments and they can actually read them then. That's beautiful, right? So I'm typing in the comments for each element in, in the rubric. And I'm paying a lot of attention to the comments and not so much attention to the numbers that I'm giving. And so I get done with somebody and then I do something stupid like I go to the next person and I lose all my information. So then I'm, okay, so then I'm mad. This happens to you when you're grading, right? You go back, maybe the other one. You go back and you're like, oh, God, I'll do all that again. So I'm typing all the comments, but faster now. And I'm going through the numbers, and then I save. And then I decide, save and submit is probably what I need to do, because if I do that, that really solidifies. That sounds really solid, but my brain doesn't remember that there might be something a little bit dangerous about doing that. But I save and submit, and I go to the next person. And after I'm reading the next person, I realize, wait a minute, what did I do with that other guy with this particular key performance indicator? Did I give him an eight? This person's done so much better. Okay, now I've got to go back. And I'm going to go back and change the points, all right? But I didn't know that I had the assignment unmuted. So he had already gotten an email that automatically was generated that said, great. Well, I don't know what it said. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it said, but it probably said something like your, your, uh, your group's, uh, your, 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 your assignment's been graded. Here's your grade. And he went on and looked at that, and then he got, when I changed something and saved and submitted again, he got another email that showed that the grade had changed. So anyway, I'll, I'll show you what he had to say. <laughs> I did keep that. Um, but I, I just want to note something, and because, because although it sounds like, God, Grossenbacher, really? You're still here? You're the one of the folks that they needed to eliminate the last time they cut the budget. You know, you might be wondering, why is she still teaching? How could someone still be here, right? But, but, but in my own defense, and I don't want to be super defensive, because I'm a school up. I'll admit, I, I did a lot of things wrong. But how about this? If you put a software program together, and there's a very important toggle that says mute or unmute, or there's a pull down menu, okay? Do you think that maybe it would make sense to have some kind of signal that is right here? So when I, when I started getting the angry emails, of course it's at night, so I don't know what to do, all right? It's midnight or something, because that's when I'm grading, and I'm like, oh my god. So I know that Antonella is not up at midnight waiting for an email from me, so it's not until the next morning that I'm like, oh my god, help me. I don't know what I did wrong. And she's like, oh yeah, you've got a mouse over. Go under where the assignment is in the grade book. Mouse over, there's a blank space. Just mouse over it and you'll see it pulled out. Well, who thinks like that? Does that make any kind of sense? I mean, I really, I can't believe it, really. And it's still there. I'm grading in Canvas right now. That's still there. And now, haha, -ha, I know the trick. It's magic. You, <laughs> you go over that little blank space, you pull it down, and you can mute the assignment, which is critically important because if you mute the assignment, then they can't see you fiddling around and adjusting the point system and all of that. So you can just keep it muted while you're grading all the stuff. And when it's all finally done, you can do the big reveal, which is mouse over that blank space and say unmute. I mean, is it crazy? I feel like I, I, wanted to, I wanted to throttle software engineers. That's how I felt. Like I, I was so angry. So, but this is what I got. So my students were angry. And I'm sure you've received, if you've taught any of the time, you've received things. I, I, the good news is, I don't think anybody actually cursed in the email because they knew she's still going to grade me. Um, but there were some things. Okay, so I got, first I got, I checked my online test this morning, oh. hoping to see some feedback posted. And I noticed my grade went down since I checked last night. Can you help me understand why? Will you be posting feedback? I spent a lot of time working on my test and would like to know where you think I lack things. So this was a test. So I screwed this up early in the semester on a, on a sort of online test-like thing that I did. So, and so here's another one. Um, and this, this guy was, oh gosh, this guy was in my office a lot. I saw that my exam score was revised significantly downward from a 95 to a 92. Now, I don't know about you. <laughs> when I use the word significantly downward, I, really, I, would, I would expect to see something different. But you can sort of tell that, oh, look at this. There's an increase in the number of points. In, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from, but I but you can kind of see what I was dealing with here, right? So I can see your current comments of each answer, but I cannot see the original comments or the cause of such a downward revision. My questions regarding this and the following, and then he enumerates them, and of course I had to 
fall on my sword and tell them, no, 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 okay, you know, please, I'm sorry, you know, we didn't mean for that to be unmuted, but of course I was done here. It was not good. This didn't go well. Um, I didn't, luckily I didn't get like millions of these because I'm a slow grader, so I had a few <laughs> before I realized, boom, I've screwed this up. So I hope I've made my point. And I, I know I got <laughs> 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 like, Muting and unmuting is just horrible. Is like, I'm sorry? Your face is in our head forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I'll be that one. Oh my God. Yeah. But you know what? If I've saved you from this, yeah. This is critically important because it goes to your credibility as a teacher, and I feel like I'm always trying to en enhance and maintain a credible presence in the classroom. And when things like this happen, I just want to I want to stab my eyes out with a pen. I'm just so angry. <laughs> so okay, but on the, uh, okay. So what what else? What else? So that's one of the big things. I'll say this about Canvas. I also decided. I don't know why, I, I wish I had reasons, but Antonella said to me, oh, it's, it's set up to do sort of default, a week by week format, why don't you do that, a lot of people do that, um, and I went with the whole everybody else is doing it, which I know is a really bad reason to do anything, okay, it's just stupid, you have to say to yourself, wait, but I, I teach a lot, and I know how my class should run. I should have gone sort of thematically and insisted on that somehow and, hey, assignment by assignment works for me. I want to do it like that. I went week by week and I ended up with this enormous page of things sort of marching down. And, and by the way, <coughs> I, I wish that the software people were here so I could tell them, can you find a way? And I hope there is a way now. Maybe there is. I wish there were a way to really make the divisions between things more obvious. I mean, you can indent things all you want. So I had this stuff. If I could show you the live page, you could actually see, oh my gosh, all marching all the way down the page. Everything seems to run together in funny ways. The icons, I'm sorry, to me the icons look kind of childish. And so I actually think Moodle looks more professional, but, um, but I'm trying to, to make it work. And I hope that at some point they decide, you know, it's really not that meaningful to have a little bubble that looks like a cloud. I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't, I don't like some of this stuff. I wish it could look more professional, but right now it's not well organized. And so my second point to you beyond the muting thing is, um, you really want to think about, do I want it week by week? Do I want it sort of thematically built around assignments? It didn't work for me to have week by week because I had an assignment due and then there were weeks of things that we were doing associated with that and they had to try to find stuff and. People didn't like that either, and I got emails about that, which I won't bother you with, but you can imagine that people weren't happy. Now, um, is there any good news that I have? Well, yes, I, I think I can end on a positive note, and that is that I'm using it this semester with a more forgiving group of people. They seem to be incredibly forgiving uh, in the College of Engineering, um, maybe because some of them are gonna be software engineers someday, and they realize you gotta have people piloting things, and so anyway, uh, I've got my rubric uh, in there, and yeah, it takes some time, and I worked with an excellent person in the College of Engineering, an instructional designer named Sarah Hagen, who actually helped me build this stuff in, and we put the points in there and all, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna try it, and I am actually grading in it right now, and I graded a, a team assignment that happens to be an engineering ethics assignment, so I'm piling it in an effort, and what I'm hoping to do, I've been talking a lot to Mo and Bishop about this, we have not just Canvas on campus, but we have this thing called APHIS, which you may know painfully as the course evaluation software. But APHIS has this ability also to integrate with Canvas and pull out outcomes data. Now, you, if, if your eyes are starting to glaze over because you hate assessment anyway, um, the good news about this is that we could make assessment almost automatic here where you could go in and say, okay, I'm grading in Canvas, I've got my rubrics in there, we need some outcomes data. Um, uh, Avis could integrate and pull out the key performance indicators from the rubrics that you've already aligned with certain student outcomes. And if you can do that, then you have outcomes data. And my news to you for, if you're not in the College of Engineering, you may not even know yet, maybe all of you know this, that. Um, the provost office is going in the direction of outcomes-based assessment. They want to have data that shows us that we need to make some changes and certainly we want evidence-based change, essentially. This is not new to us in the College of Engineering. We've been struggling with this for years. Um, 
I'm excited by it because we have a lot of faculty who are, they run when they see me because I'm the assessment person. And yet, if I made this really easy for them, and it was just like, hey, if you're in Canvas, which of your questions do you think really shows us that students are applying math and science to an engineering problem? And they'll go, God, all of them do. And I'll go, okay, pick one. And they do, and we pull it out of Canvas, and boom, we've got our data then, and we can start looking at that and have longitudinal data, and it's really nice. So I think this is all coming in a way that will make faculty's lives easier when it comes to assessment. And so that's one of the reasons I'm excited about it. And we're piloting that integration with my class this spring. So I'm really excited about that. But are there benefits to the students? I think there are benefits. And it goes back to what I said about typing things in so that they can read it. Sometimes students will say, and they say this not just to me, but to multiple people on our faculty. And not you, Mike. I'm not looking at you. But I'm thinking about my husband, whose writing you never can read. I wouldn't know his name if I, if I had to go by his signature. You cannot read his writing. And he gets that all the time. And what's he doing to change that? So I'm really trying to convince people, go on, go to this thing, start typing in comments, students can read it. And then the great thing is, if you are done grading, but it happens to be a Friday afternoon and you don't have class again until Tuesday, you can still send them their grades right then. And at least they get that feedback a little bit earlier. So I, I like that about Canvas. So there's some good things, um, but there's some challenges. And now I'm done. I don't have anything else. But I'm, I've had a lot of problems and some successes. And I'm, I'm open to any questions you have about anything I've talked about. <laughs>